50-50 is always an easy thing to do because it sounds fair just right off the bat. Um, in terms of costs and things like that, um, you know, how, how is that going to be dealt with? Um, is she going to give you basically access to the wine and food um, at the cost that she's got? How do you guys identify what those costs are in terms of the labor? The food cost and the wine cost is relatively easy and um, probably would be easiest to do this through a separate company, you know, like an LLC that you set up to do this. Um, you don't have to do that. That would make it probably easiest. And then it's just, you know, what are her duties and what are your duties and how do you guys manage things? Like, is it, you know, do you manage everything and she's kind of a silent partner? Are you guys kind of 50-50 in terms of the voting and stuff as well? That's, it's really pretty straightforward on that. I mean, I, I'm looking for some general advice on a deal that I'm working on right now. I have a CFE deal in the works and the gist of it is that I'm going to be building a new revenue stream for a business. It's going to be a subscription model. And I'm looking for guidance on how to structure this. So it's a restaurant and the restaurant has a really good wine program and they want to build a subscription business where it's packages that send out wine with food pairing that comes from the restaurant. And I'm just right now, what I want to start with is I want to have, she's agreed the owner to give me a share of the equity in this single revenue stream. Okay. And this it's exciting for me. This is my first ever attempt at a deal. And so it's someone that I know quite well. I started within mm -hmm. my own network looking for deals. Great. That's the best place. I really curious as how, what's the best way to structure this with a, just this revenue stream and future equity in the whole business. It's kind of like a trial ground. So there's more, it's kind of like um, action incentivized, like success incentivized. Well, I guess it depends on, you know, on a couple of things. If, if it's, really just on a new revenue stream, you're really talking about a new venture. So it's a, it's more of a startup than it is a consulting for equity because you're not receiving equity in, um, in the existing company. Um, but that's fine as long as, you know, as long as you understand that. So really it's just whatever you would typically talk about with respect to doing a partnership because she's bringing the list and the uh, existing access to inventory and things like that. And you're going to bring conceivably the marketing. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I'd say so. Spearheading the operation, mostly because of her time constraints. Yeah. So, um, you know, then it's just you projecting out what it's going to take to make it happen. So if you think that, um, you know, that like a if you had a 50% interest in this new revenue stream that that would work for you in terms of what it's likely to make from the projections that you guys have understanding the costs that she's already got a pretty good handle on then that's that's what i would start with right 50 50 is always an easy thing to do because it sounds fair just right off the bat um in terms of costs and things like that um you know how how is that going to be dealt with um, is she going to give you basically access to the wine and food um, at the cost that she's got? How do you guys identify what those costs are in terms of the labor? The food cost and the wine cost is relatively easy and um, probably would be easiest to do this through a separate company, you know, like an LLC that you set up to do this. Um, you don't have to do that. That would make it probably easiest. And then it's just, you know, what are her duties and what are your duties? And how do you guys manage things? Like, is it, you know, do you manage everything and she's kind of a silent partner? Are you guys kind of 50, 50 in terms of the voting and stuff as well? That's, it's really pretty straightforward on that. Did you, does that make sense? It definitely makes sense. And uh, I appreciate that. And I have a, a follow-up question in regards to, so I guess I am essentially doing the marketing. Um, I was wondering on, in terms of doing a deal like this and what's a creative suggestion in terms of 
we're going to need to run an ad campaign. It's not really an area of expertise of mine. So to outsource marketing, um, I guess wondering what's a creative way to do that where I don't, we don't have to necessarily just pay someone up front to do marketing. How do you bring them into the deal? Something along those lines. So it's the same, same way that you're doing it, right? Only ideally for, um, for uh, a deal that hopefully doesn't take up all of your equity. Because if you're coming in to do marketing and then you're going to bring somebody in effectively, they're kind of coming in under you. Um, mm -hmm. That's fine. And that's typically, you know, then that's, that's a very typical deal. Then you just have to figure out what are they willing to do their performance-based marketing for? Are they willing to do it for 10% of profit or something like that? As long as it's less than, you know, than the 50 that you've got, it would normally right. come out of your share if it's part of performing the duties that you're getting your interests to do. But if you're managing okay. the people that are going to do those things, then they can be looked at as one of two things. It can be done at cost, in which case there's a, you know, you're paying them a cost and that is considered a cost of getting that done. Um, that would typically be when you bring in an outside, like if you're the head of marketing in a company, typically you'll use other agencies and they will cost money because they all have their individual expertise and you're coordinating them. And then the question is, okay, is that a cost that's allocable to your interest or is it a cost that's allocable to the whole venture? And then the other thing would be if you're bringing them in on a performance basis where you don't have to pay, do how do you treat that? Is that going to come out of your interest or is that going to come out of kind of the whole thing as a cost? Because even though it's a percentage, it'll effectively be a dollar cost you know, every time that something gets paid on it. So it's just, and there's no right or wrong way to do that. It's just whatever, you know, whatever feels right to you guys. Okay. Yeah, that's great, Roland. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Good luck. Let us know how it goes. Okay. Um, wait, wait, the only you. thing I will say, Daniel, is, um, and mm. for everybody here, you may want, like, if if you're going into something like this, you may want to allocate some amount for your time that is either a preference that comes out before the split because you're working for your interest, but also you are doing something that would normally be a paid job. So is it appropriate? It's certainly appropriate to talk about. Is it appropriate in that deal for you to either get advanced some money that's going to come out of the existing business she's got? So, you know, hey, you're going to start this thing up. Um, I'm going to need... $2,500 a month or $5,000 a month to do this. Um, I'm happy to take that. And then you say any, any way you want to do it. You can say, I'm happy to take that uh, monthly for, you know, six months to, you know, and at that point it should be making its own money. And if not, then we can talk about it again. Or uh, I'm going to get that as a preference. So the first 5,000 a month in profit that comes in is going to come to me for operating the business. And then, you know, this sub business and then we split 50-50 after that um, or some combination of those things. So those it's because it's good to have money um, and it's good to recognize what you're doing is something that you would normally pay somebody to do. Right. So you're you're suggesting that there is there's still some little bit of compensation just to keep you going in the beginning as you're building it up. That's kind Correct. of the idea. Yeah. Okay. And that could be treated as a draw that you are have as a credit. So, you know, if you took 20, if you took five grand a month for six months, that'd be $30,000. So then $30,000 would basically, you know, a, a, a above that amount, that 5k a month, uh, you would be paying back that 30 to the partnership. Uh, or it could just be that it's, you know, that's the cost uh, of doing it. It's not a draw against, it's just, you know, the greater of, 20, uh, excuse me, the greater of $5,000 a month or 50% of profits. And that's how you guys agree it's going to be done. Okay. It's either like, it's like an advance on the profits that you will make essentially. It, it can be an advance or it can be an investment. So an advance would be recoupable. So you would ultimately pay it back. And then you have to say, well, how do I do that? Um, right. And then, you know, like what's the terms, I mean, and then um, the investment would be just, you know, Hey, we agree that there's going to have to be an investment by your existing restaurant business of $30,000 to kick this thing off. And so that's just part of the pro forma of what, what has to be invested in. You're going to invest that to have this opportunity. And that's why part of why you get your 